This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The first of our step disposals that we're going to look at is whereby we lose control of the subsidiary. So we originally had control. So let's just say that, for example, we own 90% of the sub. And if we decided to go through there and shall we say sell 50%. So dispose of a 50% holding. That takes us down to 40%, doesn't it? So we were on the 90th step. We ran down 50. We got to a door. That was the accounting boundary. We went through it and we now no longer consolidate, do we? So what we need to go through and do there is if we had a non-controlling interest, was it there 10%? We need to remove that non-controlling interest because we now no longer consolidate, do we? Uh, we also need to go through and remove all the net assets because we no longer consolidate those net assets. We also need to remove the goodwill because, again, there is now no longer any goodwill as it has been disposed of, hasn't it? And what we end up with is we look at our 40% holding. Uh, once again, you know, we need to make sure that that 40% holding that we still have is valued at fair value because we're going to treat it as, as a disposal. So we need to look at what the entire subsidiary was worth. So we know how much we have received for our 50%. We know how much the 10% was worth with regard to the NCI. We need to know what the remaining 40% was worth to be able to work out this group profit or loss on disposal. Okay, so we need to calculate a group profit or loss on disposal based on substance. So legally, the parent is disposing of shares. So there could be a, an individual company profit or loss on disposal with regards to the disposal of the investment. Here, in substance, we are disposing of a subsidiary from the group. So what we do is we take our proceeds, which, you know, our proceeds were there for the 50%, weren't they? Uh, the investment that we still hold is 40%. Add on the non-controlling interest to determine what the total value of the subsidiary is, because if you add them together, it should give you 100, shouldn't it? And then what you go through and do that is you deduct the net asset at disposal 100%, and you deduct the goodwill at disposal again, is that there of 100%. So essentially, that's all you need to do. What I would do, if I were you, and I were going into the exam, I would learn that pro forma. You take your proceeds, you add on the investment still held. Remember, that needs to be, is it there at fair value? Add on the non-controlling interest and deduct what we are disposing of being the goodwill and the net assets at disposal. I'd say it's as simple as that, but that's not that simple. So let's go through there and have a look, shall we? Uh, together at the example called socks, where we have the, the scenario where control is lost. Uh, so it wants us to go through there and calculate the group profit on disposal. So that's based on substance and the substance being that we are disposing of a subsidiary, aren't we? Uh, that would appear in the group financial statements of socks for the year ended December 20x5. Okay. Uh, so it says Sox owned 90% of Mogs uh, before it decided to sell a 50% ownership stake on 31st of December X5 for 120 million. So they're the proceeds, aren't they? We're told the non-controlling interest. Uh, we're told the fair value of the remaining 40% is there at 96. And we're told that the goodwill on acquisition was 38 and the net assets were there at 201. So when you look at this, it, you, know, you would hope that it wouldn't be too challenging then if you can remember the pro forma, isn't it? Because what you go through and do that is that you take your proceeds uh, and your proceeds were 120 million, weren't they? Uh, we add on the value of the investment that is still held. So remember, that's the fair value of the investment still held. 
which is 96. So our proceeds are for 50% because that's what we sold. We still own 40 and to value the subsidiary in its entirety, we need the non-controlling interest at the date of disposal, which we were a bit generous here, which gave us 53. And that's the, the 10%, isn't it? And if you total it up, that gives you the 100%. Uh, we then go through and deduct the net assets. The net assets were there as 201. We also deduct the goodwill and the goodwill is there at 38 and if you go through and total that up there is a group profit or loss on disposal is that there as 30 okay that's it it's not so bad provided you can remember the pro forma uh, it could get more challenging but i leave you to have a go at the questions in the revision kit and then get back to us if you find that challenge that little bit too difficult but don't panic remember how to work out the group profit or loss on disposal when you lose control within a step disposal situation let's now look at another situation with regards to a step disposal but in this instance it's not whereby we lose control it's whereby we dispose of shares but we still have control so simple example would be thinking, well, let's just say that we own 90% and we decide to dispose of 20%. So we now own 70%, don't we? You do not have, if you like, a gain or loss on disposal, do we? Because we have not stopped consolidating. We still consolidate. We still have a subsidiary but with changed levels of ownership. So what you have is a transfer between the owners to show that the non-controlling interest was equal to 10% and that the non-controlling interest now has increased to 30%. So what we're doing in terms of our journal entries is that we're going to credit our non-controlling interest because our non-controlling interest will increase and the reason why we increase it is because the non-controlling interest own more of the net assets of the subsidiary. So here, what we're going to do is you're going to take the ownership change. So should we just say 20% and we multiply that by whatever the value of S's net assets are because the subsidiary's non-controlling interest now own 20% more of those net assets, but they also own as well more of the goodwill. So of that goodwill, that full goodwill, uh, the parent own 90% and the parent now owns 70. So therefore the non-controlling interest own 20% more of it. So you will take 20% here because we have sold 20% of S's net assets and the goodwill so that we can then credit the non-controlling interest with that amount. You then debit the bank with the amount of money that you've received from the sale of the shares before once again you debit or credit reserves and most of the time it's likely to be a credit to the reserves. Uh, where does that adjustment seen? That adjustment is seen like earlier on within the group statement of changes in equity. So you need to remember the debits, the credits, and, and how we process the calculations. Uh, let's see how we get on with that, with the example underneath, which is called Betty. Okay. Uh, here it says prepare the journal entry. So it just wants us to go through there, doesn't it? And look at the debits and credits to record, as we refer to it, the change in ownership from 90 to a 70% holding. So as it says, Betty owned 90% of the shares of Penny before it then sold 20% for 90 million. So we have received, is it 90 million? So we will debit our bank with the 90 million dollars. That's nice and easy, isn't it? I like go back to the first days of financial accounting. Cash has gone up, 
so therefore we are going to increase our assets to increase assets we debit our assets so debit bank 90 million the rest of it that's then hard isn't it because we then go through and credit the non-controlling interest uh, so here there is a 20% fall in the ownership isn't there uh, the net assets at the data disposal were 350 so the NCI are entitled to 20% more of the net assets and also 20% more of the goodwill so 350 plus 50 so is that 20% of 400 which I think works out is it as 80 million and the credit is to our reserves because it is a credit as it is a balancing figure isn't it there's an excess of debits over credits so we credit the reserves again in terms of increases and decreases credits increase equity balances so increase the non-controlling interest and increase the reserves were no not the statement of financial yes the statement of changes in equity okay like we saw in that earlier sample question when we had a change in ownership but instead of going down we're going up the stairs okay uh, so previously we were going up now we're going down aren't we so there we go debit bank credit nci credit reserves and those credit entries appear within the group statement of changes in equity there we go so let's have a look at a big group statement of profit or loss question that involves either a step acquisition or a step disposal so what we've got if we look at the question it says there to prepare the statement of profit or loss the maryland group so maryland must be the parent and our year ended is december x5 okay uh tansy uh we need to look there don't we to see whether or not that's a subsidiary and whether it's been bought during the year whether it's been sold during the year so we need to, to read on uh it says maryland acquired 75 percent of the equity share capital of tansy on the 1st of Jan X2, so several years ago, we gained control, didn't we? We had a 75% holding. So that will be a 75% holding at the start of the year and a 25% NCI. So we'll begin to consolidate at the start of the year. However, we're then told that on the 1st of April X5, so is that three months into the year? Yeah, three months, uh, we just disposed of a 10% holding now if we dispose of a 10% holding going from 75 down to 65 we still have control don't we so when it comes to consolidating we are going to consolidate for the full 12 months we don't need to prorate the results when it comes to adding across all of p and all of s because we have control s for a full 12 months haven't we However, let's just have a look at a bit of a timeline. Put in the dates to show what is then vitally important. So that's my year, beginning of January to the end of December. Uh, partway through the year, was it there the 1st of April? X5, that's when we disposed of a 10% holding. We own 75, we now have. 65 and the reason why it's important is because the non-controlling interest is going to be 25 percent for is that three months so when we're looking at the non-controlling interest in the group uh, and we're looking at the non-controlling interest share of s's profits we will take our 25 percent won't we but S's profits will need to be prorated for those three months. Similarly, when it comes to looking at when we have a 65% holding and a 35% NCI, we will need to prorate S's profits for the nine months that those profits have been, where we own 65% and the NCI owned 35%. So it's just playing around with the NCI with regards to our calculation. 
there's no big group profit or loss on disposal because it's not as if we have lost control of the subsidiary we have control for the full 12 months don't we uh, in the question you'll note there are no adjustments no pub adjustments uh, fair value adjustments or anything like that so we can just go through and keep it nice and simple I will just use my bracketed workings is it two four six eight plus one six six four if you tap that onto your calculator I think that gives you four one three two uh, cost of sales 1808 plus 1287 so does that give me 3095 which gives me a gross profit of 1037 so nothing too challenging so far uh, we then have your operating expenses is that 285 and 156 our finance costs that we've just seen was 83 and 39 so my operating expenses come to is it 441 uh, my finance cost 122 which gives me the is it profit before tax is that four seven four uh, tax nice easy figure uh, you've got 53 plus 36 so does that give me 89 and that should give me three eight five okay so far so good uh, then that's the challenge isn't it that group profit for the year needs to be attributable to parent and the non-controlling interest so the parent is going to be a balancing figure isn't it okay once we've worked out what the NCI is so for the non-controlling interest I need to take 20% of 3 twelfths of S's profit for the year. I need to take 35% of 9 twelfths of S's profits for the year. What are S's profits for the year? Well, there are no adjustments. If there were adjustments, you would need to adjust for them. But you have there, is it 146 as S's profits? for the year okay uh, so does that give me is it 9.13 and is it 38.33 and if you combine those two together does it give you I think it's 47.5 okay. yeah 47.5 so my non-controlling interest is there at 47.5. The amount attributable to the parent is the balancing figure. So taking the 385 less the 47.5, which gives me 337.5. There we go. If you're looking at an F2 exam question, then I would have thought that it would ask you to calculate the non-controlling interest, wouldn't it? Based upon the fact that you have a change in ownership and you still have control. So you need to prorate the profits and apply the correct NCI percentage to the correct prorated profits. I think that would be more of an exam style question. But like we've done several times, we want to give you the big picture to help you understand the, the more intricate detail as you answer the questions in the revision kit.